Hi, hope you're having a great day. Today I want to talk about HDL. We all, we, we're all aware of our lipid profile where we look at figures like our total cholesterol, we look at our LDL, we look at our HDL, we look at our triglyceride levels and all of that stuff. It's extremely important to understand there's been a lot of focus on cholesterol but we need to understand that there are good cholesterols in the body and there are bad cholesterols. Number one, the human body requires cholesterol for almost every single function from a cellular level to your skin to your hair every single function in the body almost every single function requires cholesterol so cholesterol really isn't a bad thing unless we're storing too much of it in the wrong form we have bad cholesterol called ldl that's low density lipoproteins and then we have high density lipoproteins which is a hdl and that's your good cholesterol now we need good levels of hdl you see all of our focus is usually on lowering our LDL, which is our bad cholesterol, we constantly look at ways to lower that. But we need to understand it works in the human body as a ratio. So if you have a good HDL, HDL, the function of HDL is to remove, it acts like a scavenger, removing LDL, too much of LDL out of your body. It basically takes it to the liver to be excreted out of your system. So we need to understand that the more HDL you have, the better lipid profile you have. It's very important to understand a lot of people get medicated on total cholesterol, but we need to go a step further and look at the ratios because sometimes if your triglycerides are way in control, your HDL is really good and it's only your LDL that's high, you're still in a much, much safer place. But if your triglycerides are over level and you have low HDL, then yes, there would definitely be a requirement for medication. But like I always say, never get off your medication or your statins without your doctor's permission. But yes, I also say that it is possible to get off your statins when you make lifestyle changes you work with your lifestyle you work with your doctors to reduce your medication over time there are very few people who need cholesterol medication for a lifetime a lot of those cases are highly genetic and no matter what lifestyle changes they make their hdl tends to be low or their triglycerides tend to be high but now we're going to focus on simple things that can help you boost your hdl because the better the more hdl you have of course within the limit it's going to keep your heart in a safe place so it's not about just getting rid of LDL, it's about using what your body already has, which is HDL, to act, act as a scavenger and remove bad LDL from your body. What happens is the LDL accumulates and it forms plaque within our arteries, it causes inflammation and that leads to strokes, blockages, and all of the other problems related to heart disease and cardiac arrests. Now, unfortunately, there are very few things that you can do to boost your HDL. Now, Let's start with the first one, exercise. We have to understand that a sedentary lifestyle is detrimental to your health, including your HDL levels. One of the most powerful things that can boost your HDL naturally is exercise. Getting your heart rate up more than your normal heart rate at least five to six times in a week. This could be in a 30 minute workout, it could be in a 15 minute intensive workout, it could be spaced over an hour. You could get it from a dance class, you could get it from your Pilates, you can get it from running, from weightlifting, whatever it is, but you need to get your heart rate up. That's extremely important. Exercise is one of the most beneficial ways of getting your HDL up. Number two, we look at omega-3 fats. Now, when I look, say omega-3, this doesn't mean you have to jump onto supplements right away. Now, if you already have a low L HDL problem, sometimes a good quality omega-3 supplement will help. But if you're a fish eater and you're getting good quality Fatty fish, you will get your omega-3 from those natural fish sources. For vegetarians, you get it from flax seeds, you get it from walnuts. So depending on your levels, you decide professionally if you need to supplement or not. But we do get omega-3 in a lot of non-vegetarian, vegetarian options as well. Now, good fats, for the longest time, people have victimized good fats. They moved on to low-fat foods and that created all the problem because most low-fat foods had high sugar added to it to make it taste better. But the problem was never really with fat. It's always been about sugar and we've been fooled for the longest time about sugar and carbohydrates. We've consumed more carbohydrates, we have more diabetes. We've consumed more sugar, we have diabetes, inflammatory conditions and immense obesity. So good fats is, re is required for your hormones, it's required for your skin, it's required to even help you lose weight. Good fat helps you burn fat, period. Now there are bad fats and one of them are trans fats and hydrogenated fats that you find mostly in processed foods, packaged foods and highly refined oils. Now you wanna be careful of trans fats and hydrogenated fats. So it's extremely important for you to understand you choose a good, a good cooking medium. 
That could be olive oil if it's a light saute or you're adding it raw to your food. Olive oil is a great fat. It's a great fat for your HDL. So is cold pressed coconut oil and so is pure ghee. Any cold pressed oil for that matter in the right proportion will boost your HDL. Now we need to understand that even if it's a good oil for you, if you have it in excess, it is going to make you put on weight and it is going to be bad for your heart. So if you're going to start drinking coconut oil in the morning and you're not going to change the proportion of coconut oil or other oils in your food, it's going to be a problem for you. You are going to put on weight and too much of anything, including good oils, will be bad for your body. So we need to understand that the good fats are essential for boosting up your HDL levels and also decreasing your triglycerides. If you're a smoker, you need to understand that smoking will suppress your HDL and this causes damage in your arteries and allows more of the plaque and more of the inflammation to happen between your arteries, which is why for smokers, HDL levels are usually on the lower side. So by cutting down on your smoking or getting off completely, you will be able to change your HDL levels. If you carry too much of weight in your abdominal area, it makes sense for you to start looking at losing a couple of inches and a little bit of weight because any, a bit, any amount of weight loss will help you boost your HDL levels right up. Now there are certain foods which are rich in anthocyanins. These are in colored vegetables like eggplant, purple cale, uh, cabbage, and the entire berry family. So these different colored, dark colored vegetables are rich in anthocyanins, which also helps you to boost your HDL up. So these are the few things, unfortunately, there are very few things that you need to boost your HDL levels up. But if you really look and you have a balanced lifestyle where you're working out, you're having you know, your food, the right medium of oil going into your system, you really don't have to worry too much about your HDL levels. Like I said, the biggest stealer of good HDL is a sedentary lifestyle. So that's something that most of us have the ability to control and to change right away. So have a great day, everyone. If you have your lipid profiles, go through that. You want to be aware of your HDL because most people only look at their total cholesterol. Don't look at your total cholesterol. You look at a breakdown of your cholesterol, you look at your LDL, your HDL, your triglycerides, and you want to make sure your triglycerides are well below and your HDL is well within that range. And even if your LDL is a little on the higher side, it really doesn't matter. But if your HDL is low, your triglycerides are high, and your LDL is high, you better be making serious lifestyle changes or you will be required to be on medication for a long time. And we all know that every single medication, including a statin that goes into your system, has side effects. So if you have to be on a statin, don't just jump on it because it has side effects. Understand that you need to be taking a CoQ10 enzyme, so ask your doctor to prescribe that to you, and a selenium, because these are two things that a statin depletes and leads to side effects in the human body. It depletes selenium and it depletes CoQ10. So these are normal supplements that your doctor should be able to prescribe for you if you're taking a statin, and that will reduce the amount of muscle spasms you have, the weakness, the fatigue that a statin may cause for you. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.